What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about HomebrewCon. It's a bit late after the event to make the video, but hopefully it does help shine some light on what HomebrewCon is all about if you're looking to go in the future and you don't know what to expect. HomebrewCon is an event hosted by the AHA, or the American Homebrewers Association, every year. It's the single largest gathering of homebrewers on the planet at one time and place, and is a great way to connect with the homebrewing community. At the end of the day, HomebrewCon breaks down into three major things. First, it is one big party where the beer flows like water and you get to hang out with hundreds of like-minded people and homebrew celebrities. Second, it's an information gold mine with sessions and seminars led by experts and accomplished homebrewers which focus on some very interesting subjects. And thirdly, it is a chance for homebrewers and homebrew clubs to receive their national homebrew competition medals in person. As far as partying goes, it's a blast. Once you register, you'll get a two to four ounce taster glass that you'll want to carry with you everywhere. Every session has some sort of beer or other fermented beverage to sample along with the presentation and refills are encouraged. In the middle of everything is the Homebrew Expo, where you can wander around, getting your cup refilled, and check out the newest gear, ingredients, and resources in the homebrew industry. Once you get through to the evening, it's full-on party time. On day one, it was the opening party, with big names in San Diego breweries showing off their best. On day two, it's club night, which in my opinion is the most fun part of all of HomebrewCon. Dozens of homebrew clubs are serving their finest. They dress up in ridiculous costumes and you get to try some incredible brews that are not just trendy beer styles like Hazy IPA. In the same night, I had a Pivo Grodziski, a 10-year-old barrel-aged Flanders Red Ale, as well as several Lambics, Trappist Singles, Dark Milds, and Old Ales. And it is an absolute blast to try obscure beers that homebrewers love. Finally on the last night is the Knockout Party, where you get to try all the beer that is left over from the National Homebrew Competition. This one is fun, especially if you submit it to the competition, so you can taste the beer that your beer went up against in the competition. The educational aspect of the conference is not to be missed either. If you can get over your hangover quickly enough to make it to the sessions that start at 10 a.m., you'll be rewarded with some of the most interesting presentations on beer and brewing that you'll find outside of collegiate courses. This is the full session schedule for HomebrewCon this year, and you'll quickly notice that you'll need to make a plan to choose which sessions to hit, since up to four are happy happening simultaneously. As for me, I chose to go to a mix of what I knew the least about, things like non-alcoholic brewing, lambic brewing, ancient German beers, and gluten-free brewing with alternative grains, plus in one session we tapped a cask of dark mild at 10 o'clock in the morning. I also attended some sessions led by some of my homebrew heroes and got a chance to meet them. I got to see John Palmer, Brad Smith, Gordon Strong, Denny Kahn, and Drew Beecham all in person, and it was great to hear what they had to say. Another huge highlight was meeting fellow brewtubers in person, such as Trent from The Brew Show, Bradley from Portly Gentleman, and Matt from Mean Brews. These guys are awesome in person and were a blast to hang out with. The final day is pretty open before the National Homebrew Competition Awards Ceremony in the late afternoon, so this is really the optimal time to explore the host city. I chose to take an Uber to town on Diego and check out the waterfront for a few hours. I got some great tacos and explored the USS Midway before heading back for the awards ceremony. The NHC Awards Ceremony is quite a big event as well. If you submitted any entries that made it to the final round, this is a really exciting time as you wait for your category to be called and watch people receive their medals in person or walk up there yourself. Although unfortunately my beers didn't medal this year, I nonetheless really enjoyed being in the middle of everything while people saw their hard work get recognized on the national stage, and that was really cool. After I had my fill at the knockout party, I headed back to the hotel room to get some rest before my super early flight the next morning. So now let's talk logistics. Each year, HomebrewCon is hosted in a different major city in the US. Last year it was in Pittsburgh, this year was San Diego, and next year we'll be in Denver, along with Great American Beer Festival. The conference is usually going to be held in a large hotel or conference center, and they pretty much have everything you need in one place. Tickets to the event are typically going to run you about $170 to $400, depending on which package you buy. This ranges from just the Saturday, which really only includes the NHC awards ceremony, to the full conference with all of its benefits. 
although you can get some special early bird pricing which does help a lot. I truly think the event is worth the ticket cost alone, but whether or not you're close to the city it's taking place in will truly determine if it's actually worth it to you. As for me, I spent several hundred dollars more than the ticket price on flights and the hotel, but luckily I can recoup some of the price as a business expense. And lastly now for a few pro tips. You're going to want a stash of electrolyte drinks, antiacid, and caffeine to keep yourself moving throughout each day. It really is a three-day marathon, not a sprint, and you'll want to take care of yourself, especially after club night. Secondly, I highly recommend getting one of the discounted on-location hotel rooms just for safety and simplicity. I'll admit that I needed to go take a nap in the middle of day two, and that was a game changer. Lastly, bring your own beer to the event. In fact, it's even encouraged. Lots of people brought their own stuff around to share between sessions, but easily the highlight was somebody walking around with a miniature keg of Baltic Porter in a backpack with a picnic tap sticking out the side. It was awesome. And lastly, you will see homebrew celebrities everywhere. Don't be afraid to walk up to them and say hi. All these people like John Palmer, Denny Kahn, Drew Beecham, etc. are all super down to earth and they love to talk about beer and brewing all day long and will be more than happy to take pictures with you. This also goes for brewtubers like me, Trent, and Bradley. Far and away the highlight of the event for me was meeting so many of you, chatting about anything and everything and taking pictures together. And I'm really grateful that I've helped so many of you that you want to actually let me know that in person. My favorite thing about running a YouTube channel is that I can make a positive difference in this community and you guys let me know that more than ever at HomebrewCon this year. So thank you so much for all of that. Anyway guys, I hope you appreciated the video and I'll see you guys next year at the next HomebrewCon. So until then, cheers.